morning everyone and thank you for joining Esme and I as we go through our devotionals every day between 7 and 7 30 a.m. so I hope you can continue to join us throughout the month of November we are following a devotion um, and it's a daily devotion that we're following every single day so I still have just a few more and Esme lives in Bernie so just reach out to us if you want to follow along but if not um, you can play this back. I'll have it on IGTV and we will share it. But also, if you have any prayer requests, please send those to us. You can direct message us any prayers that you may have. And um, yeah, we would love to hear from you. And if you can pray for us as well as we go on this journey together. But um, today we're going to be reading from Matthew 634. So if you want to follow along that is the verse that we're going to um, be following. Let me see if I can let her in just a second. And I hope everybody is doing well. Um, it has been a lot of fun just to get so many direct messages from everyone that's following us. And we appreciate everyone's comments and prayers so much for following us. I hope it's a blessing to you as it is um, for us as well. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Living and learning. Uh, breathing. Yes. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I think my stand is working. Last time it was just like falling. It looks falling. good. Well, the lighting, the lighting looks good. <laughs> oh, okay. It's from the outside. All right. Hopefully it stays because it was like my phone's so heavy. Okay. Okay. okay I'm going to start. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for life today. We thank you for air in our lungs, just waking with zeal to expect your miraculous signs and wonders and great favor, Father. We thank you. We honor you. And I pray for everyone that is under the sound of our voices, Father, I, especially Louisa and, and I, that we die to the flesh. educate them father in your word in the mighty name of jesus we pray and we honor you amen amen thank you so much thank you everyone for joining. good morning um today we're on matthew 6 34 don't be anxious about tomorrow god will take care of your tomorrow too live one day at a time the title is don't obsess over the future the story is told of a clock that spent a great deal of time worrying about its future, reasoning that it had to tick twice each second. How much ticking might that be? The clock thought. So it began to calculate that it would tick 120 times each minute, which is 7,200 times each hour. That meant in 24 hour day, it would have to tick 172 872,800 times and 663,000 times every year, but this time the clock began to overwhelm and sweat profusely. Finally, it calculated then in a 10-year period, it would, have to it would have to take 630 million times, and at that point, the clock collapsed with a nervous breakdown. Psychologists reckon that 95% of all we worry about never happens. What about the other 5%? Four out of five times, things turn out better than we anticipated, including a lot of our outright blessings. In the end, only 1% of all the bad we think might actually does, and of it, this is rarely as bad as we feared. That's why Jesus said, don't be anxious about tomorrow. God will take care of your tomorrow too. Live one day at a time. The Apostle Peter gives us the right perspective to live by these in these words. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties are your worries, are your concerns, once and for all. On him, for he cares for your affectionate and cares for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. So the word for you today is don't obsess over the future. Amen. Amen. I was looking up the word outright and it says completely, like totally, um, all together and completely. Because I wanted to know like what exactly like it, would, it meant in that area. But um, on the rest of that scripture, which is Matthew 634 is the one that they're concentrating on. Um, it was, so I, I started on 33. 
Your Heavenly Father already knows your needs, and He will give you all the need from day to day if you live for Him and make the kingdom of God your primary concern. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its worries. Today, trouble is enough for today. Which is, can't even be more true. That's so true because, I mean, why would we want to burden ourselves with the worries of tomorrow when it's going to distract from what we're supposed to fulfill today? That in itself is a word. Um, oh, good morning, everybody. I don't know if I said that to everybody tuning in. Um, that, yeah, that's a word in itself. Yeah, and if you go back a little bit further on mm -hmm. that same one, um, it says, can any of you by worrying at a single moment to your lifespan? Mm -hmm. Why are you about clothes? Learn from the way the wild flowers grow, that they do not or spin, they do not work or spin, but I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was clothed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown into the oven tomorrow, will he not much provide for you? O oh, you of little faith, so do not worry and say, what are we to eat and what are we to drink? Or what are we to wear? All these things the pagans seek. Your heavenly father knows that you need them all. Amen. Yeah, and I think, because um, this, this is a verse that, you know, Jesus said, Jesus said this himself. And it was a commandment, right? So mm -hmm. he's telling us, like, he was kind of just getting mad and saying, don't worry, because mm -hmm. he knows he was Jesus and God brought Jesus. So that way he would become human and he can know the emotions and the feelings that humans feel. So he can relate to being mm -hmm. anxious and, and to being worried because he knows how that feels. Mm -hmm. And he sent that. And so he's sitting down saying, look, you need to stop. You need not to worry. It was a commandment. But then he says, um, because, you know, because tomorrow we just don't, we just don't know. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about tomorrow. It's just common sense just to worry about today. Mm -hmm. And he wanted us to know that, but he, he also had compassion in saying that it was like, he was, you know, commanding it, but then he was like saying, you know, look, this is why I'm mm -hmm. telling you this. Like, it's, you know, not for you to worry. It's for you to lay it at the cross and lay it at the feet and lay those burdens because it's pretty much a waste of time. And I like how that says because, yeah, where people get so confused about, you know, worrying and planning, right? It's yeah. mm -hmm. planning for the future is another thing. That's when you become wise and you plan things out and you save or or you make your goals that's not worrying. You're not worrying about it. You're mm -hmm. just preparing moving into your direction of the purpose that God wants mm -hmm. you to. And he has you in that relationship with you, right? So you write everything down and you're, you have, um, you have this calmness about you and you have this confidence in God that you're going to trust him to go with you. Not mm -hmm. like, Oh my gosh, you know, tomorrow I have like 10,000 things to do. How am I going to get it done? Rather than, okay, let's, let me see how I can figure this out. Right. Mm -hmm. Let me see. What's the best plan? What's the best way to do this mm -hmm. rather than freaking out? Because those emotions that come with it, they're not of God, right? Because yes, no. like, you know, somebody that's addicted usually goes to a class if they want to get better and they go through those emotions. And what do they tell you? One day at a time, just mm -hmm. take one day at a time because that's all they can do mm -hmm. um, is take one day at a time. But then you have to retract and look at all those, the, all those feelings um that diminish us because it leaves us out of control it has our heart racing mm -hmm. it has us losing our mind it has us you know um in a state that we just it's unhealthy and god did that's not of god right and i used to be there all the time because as a new mom or whatever mm -hmm. i just want to have so much control over everything right i just mm -hmm. wanted to have control over so many things and if something would happen to me, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, I was just like freak out all of, all the time. That was me. And I wanted to make sure that everything was right. And it came from a place of care, but then it came of, out of a place that I didn't trust God, right? Well, it's it's ego edging God it's out. Ego. You, you, you take God out and you start driving the car when God's telling you like, let me yeah. drive the car and you just sit on the <laughs> sit on the passenger side and let me drive the car and Right. When I want to worry about things, or let me rephrase that. I don't want to worry. But when the enemy wants or like tries to put stuff in my head or just strategies, lies, deceit, when he put tries to plant stuff like that, I just, I mean, looking out in the world and going, taking a walk out in the world, especially out here where I live, 
I walk a lot. I go riding the bike. I'm always outside. But because nature and the way the world works, like I'm talking about trees, grass, dirt, plants, just the way it cares for itself, grass that hasn't even been watered, it's somehow still there. Of course, there's some grass that's greener than some grass, right? Because it's watered and cared for more. But just because of the fact that I can look at a, the sidewalk or a piece like the concrete and I see a plant come out of the concrete, that itself, it just ministers to me. It encourages me. It educates me. That's why when a lot of people ask me like, you know, where do you get wisdom from? Where do you, you know, well, of course I pray for it, but walking out in the world, just like out in the country, nature is, is just thriving on its own without somebody there nurturing it. In fact, some humans are out there damaging it. So that's why uh, in alone in itself, when it said that the flowers in itself, like um, I read right now, it says, uh, and if God cares so wonderfully for flowers that are here today and gone tomorrow, won't he morely, more surely care for you? And that in itself, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I guess when I'm, I don't know, just, it just speaks to me. It ministers to me. Like, don't worry. I mean, the birds wake up and they fly around. The birds minister to me greatly. Like, they know about bad weather before us, and we're supposed to be smarter than any living animal, but yet the birds know, or dogs, pets feel danger, or they feel uh, they feel evil way before us, but because they're in tune with what God has called them to be in tune with. It's like a, a dog can't be a cat, because it's a dog. It was created to be a dog. And that in itself just ministers to me, like, Esme, were you created to worry? Hey. Were you created to worry? No, I wasn't. I was created to focus on what God wants me. So it says focus on the things of the kingdom, focus on God, and all of everything will supply itself. Especially this one is take delight in the Lord. That, I will tell you, that's just something that I, I when I'm walking or when I'm just doing things I love and the finances come in, I'm just like, he's really, <laughs> those are facts. When he's telling you to take delight in him, do what he created you to do. It's like I said, do what you love to do. If you could do it for free, it's because that's what God created you to do. Therefore, you're just doing it naturally because it's what you were created to do. As I said, a fish is created to be in the water. You don't see a fish trying to be a horse, you know. And, and if we were to focus on what he's telling us to do, do not worry about tomorrow. In itself, we will be, we will pro be provided abundantly what we need. Now, when you step out of your calling and you step out of your purpose, then you can start to worry because, and that's what happens is what I've noticed is that even with like my children, they'll start worrying when they're being disobedient. They'll start hiding when they're being disobedient, just like Adam and Eve, you know, when they disobeyed God and they were covering themselves with leaves, they were trying to blend in with the trees. I mean, You're not a tree. Adam and Eve were not a tree. And right now this is a word for someone. I don't know. This is somewhere out of God just dropped this. Are you hanging out with trees? laughing at what trees are laughing at doing what trees are doing but you weren't created to be a tree and that's what help that's what pushes us to have worry when we're being obe disobedient to god when we're not doing what he's called us to do we start fearing because that, that god is calling you to do something and you're being disobedient so you start worrying and you think oh i don't think he's gonna fulfill what i what i what i need why because you're not fulfilling what you're supposed to be fulfilling there's where the enemy comes in to cause worry regret guilt shame all of that comes in once all that comes in that's it you're being disobedient so just as adam and eve you know even uh, cain and abel when when god said you know where's your brother and he answered with an with an attitude cain and he said oh am i my brother's keeper you start becoming sassy you start becoming you know um just disrespectful you start becoming full of shame and guilt so there it's going to cause you to think that you're less than therefore the lord won't provide for you but once again, God doesn't punish us. It's us, like you said, it's the consequences of our own actions. When we're disobedient and not walking in what God has called us to, it's going to cause you to worry about tomorrow. Yeah, You're going to worry about today. I have like that little doubt, like, oh, yeah, I was being disobedient. So, oh, you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's back there. I remember reading, or I think I was listening to a podcast by Joyce Meyer. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, she went through a lot. And she went through mm -hmm. addictions in her life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she went through, um, you know, some hardship with her and her husband and they went through money struggles and yes. 
And I remember her staying a point in their life where she was so worried about money and paying the bills and she would just get angry. And, you know, we all have these emotions. We all go through them as human. It's just how we respond and react to them. Right. And she said that she would just get so upset because her husband would just be so peaceful sitting Mm -hmm. over there. And he had to work, he had to work for seven years (laughs) and, they got, they received a lot of that. She reminds me a lot about me. I'm not going to lie because he received, her husband received a lot of criticism because she was so wise and she just, she was the, the preacher. She was the person educating people. And, and she reminds me so much of me because the, a lot of the people from the church and pastors would tell her husband, like, you're supposed to be leading the home. You're supposed to be doing this. And it, I mean, God called her for a specific purpose. And it's like, like my husband, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Esme runs him, Esme this. No, the thing is that my husband trusts me. It's just, I, I told my husband the other day, you remind me of Joseph with Mary because a lot of people said, oh, he forgave Mary and Mary had slept with someone when she was carrying Jesus in her. But Joseph, you know, he had to wrestle with his ego as well because God told him like, do not lean on your own understanding. She's going to birth something that's great. And that's the way it is with, I told Jerry the other day, my husband, I said, my love, you remind me of Joseph because I'm birthing something that the Lord has called me to birth. And many people may say, oh, Esme runs you. Esme, no, no, no. Esme's connected with the Holy Spirit. And he's connected to the Holy Spirit. And and my husband knows where to like, okay, I'm going to trust her. I'm going to trust that the Lord is giving her something to birth. And I'm going to help her birth it. And a lot of people want to give us criticism so, about it. I think that story can have us see things in a different way from yes. different people. But him, I feel like, you know, the husband was the head. Because without him and without his support, mm-hmm. she would have like, yes, she, yes. she wouldn't have had that encouragement that we need in fellowship, yes. we need in marriage. Mm-hmm. And just like, you know, your husband's encouraging you. Mm-hmm. And that is so, so much more because if Mary did not have Joseph, she wouldn't have birthed mm-hmm. anything. She would have been mm-hmm. alone or that mm-hmm. baby could have died because yes, he needed to find her somewhere to have that child. And yes. she needed to be fed and she needed to have, you know, she needed to have that comfort and that care. And yes. he provided that for her. He provided the nurture, he, the care. Things yes. Things that we take for granted in that encouragement, in that care. And we don't think that as being a leader. Mm-hmm. And that is much more above and beyond the leader than, mm-hmm. than any of that. Because I feel yeah. like her husband, you know, sat there and he was the beacon of Jesus mm-hmm. sitting there. Yes. Her baby. You know, they do the most work. Right. And it's just it's the like undercover work. Also was in the boat. They were just so worried. Like, Jesus, wake up. Like, come on. <laughs> we're, we're about to, yes, we're like, about to see. Joyce there, right? It's like, man, we have like this storm of bills here and you're sitting there, you know, so. Doing nothing. Not. And not that he didn't care, but, you know, the words that he told her, you know, that really just resonated with me because he said, um, Joyce, you know, what are you worried about? We're being obedient. We're tithing. We are following the commandments. We are being faithful to God. Mm-hmm. We are, uh, you know, we are um, honoring the Sabbath. We are honoring everything that God has told us to. What are you worried about? Mm-hmm. He was so confident in his faith in God and be in his obedience out mm-hmm. of everything. He was faithful and he was confident in his obedience that Joyce never saw that. Joyce mm-hmm. just was overcome mm-hmm. by that fear overcome by that anxiety that was placed she was distracted she was focusing she wasn't focusing on god she was focusing she was on the finances control mm-hmm. i mean it was her and she says this over and over that she tries to take control almost of everything she's a, yes she's a very uh, controlling i am too I'm and very controlling. Well, I, I just feel like her husband is the reason that w- is why she is there and in mm-hmm. so much that she learned that and it was a pivotal moment in her life where it just changed completely and mm-hmm. so I was, you know, and in everything that I do on, you know, in the devotionals that we were reading before, those are obstacles, right? Mm-hmm. All this fear and all this anxiety, we have to like unveil it every single day. And we have to see, okay, what are the obstacles for today? Is it exactly. fear? Is it anxiety that's keeping us from that blessed yes. much greater? Are we so consumed by, you know, paying the bills? And why are we having to pay the bills in the first place? Were we in debt? before did we not you know were we not wise but we have each and every day to you know redeem that with god and lay that at his feet and that's why i say to make a journal of what you're feeling because you can you if you make a journal like if i'm feeling sad or i'm feeling stressed 
you can like re- you can like figure out if you can't figure it out off your off the top of your head usually sometimes you can't but if you write down what you're feeling you you just look at it and it helps you backtrack it, and that's why the lord says in the bible and habakkuk 2 2 is to write things down make it plain i i, I saw the movie yesterday the war room mm-hmm. it was so good um and it, it it's it's about strategically praying in detail and i firmly believe and know for a fact that when you quote scripture in your prayers you, it's aligning yourself with god's will and god's will in the bible is not a lie it doesn't come back void it's a promise it's a guarantee that no matter what you go through you pray with quoting scripture it's like as for me and my home we will serve the lord right there you're that's what god says so why is anything going to going to happen in your, ham, your family the other way right mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah for sure i mean that was a huge that was my conviction right there was that movie and that book mm-hmm. i mean it completely changed my life i mean not in that but i but i prayed for that i prayed for it to be a blessing and it was mm-hmm. a pivotal moment like i just mm-hmm. did not know how to pray and i'm telling you i mean it completely manifested it's a process alignment with me and i just saw him so much in my prayers then because before it was just about me it was only mm-hmm. about me and not him receiving my mercy and me mm-hmm. thanking him in everything that i did but yeah yesterday one of my friends gave me um this book mm-hmm. it's called the power of now oh, no. talking about exactly what this is saying is oh wow it's that our human mind um we have to train it also because mm-hmm. we cannot just wake up and not worry some of us mm-hmm. have had worry in our lives for years and we have to train our brain mm-hmm. to do that and so we have to recognize like you said you have to recognize and that's the best way to do that is by journaling because mm-hmm. you know our thoughts just come and leave like so quickly and they're just like a thousand like mm-hmm. millions of thoughts a day right and but you just got to deal with them deal them, with them and we see them and so this book kind of tells you um from that perspective and it does talk about god and it says it it's in the spirit but if we see those thoughts as just thoughts of something that is not of us and we just look at them from afar and recognize them but not move on them we don't act on them we don't have any emotion tied to them that we mm-hmm. just see them then we will continue to be in the now that we will continue to actually live in the moment because mm-hmm. if we're just continuously worrying about here and worrying about tomorrow or worried about the past and what it's going to be tomorrow then we never fully live in that moment and so we never appreciate we're never you know yesterday yesterday's was the now at some point right and mm-hmm. in the future there's going to be a now moment but mm-hmm. if we never realize this current moment that I'm having with you and you know recognizing that giving you my full attention then we'll never be able mm-hmm. to get out of those anxieties and get out of our own thoughts that mm-hmm. pretty much overtake us right mm-hmm. and you actually you actually just kind of park them like i i believe when you yeah. wake up in the morning i just that's why i surrender and submit my day to the lord because i know in handing it over to him whatever the enemy is going to try to come with it the lord will protect my mind from it but it's also what we speak i firmly believe in that whatever we say i mean i always believe i read it one time and it says you know speak sweet words because you will have to be you will have to eat the words that you speak and if you speak kind words you'll eat kind and sweet stuff but if you speak bitterness and salty stuff to other people you're going to have to eat that one day and that's what i saw a lot in the movie of the war room how when people criticize you and say things to you that's why like recently that i've heard a lot of criticism in my life and a lot of just hurt and meanful like hurtful things to me i mean really evil things things have been said about me to me and i all i say is i pray that you never have to walk in these shoes that i'm walking right now because my season will pass but if you continue to judge someone or say oh that person's walking through that because they deserved it you're not god and if you're speaking like that i pray for you, your heart because what we speak comes back down and you have to be very careful and and good happens to to good and bad happens to good too though and it's all because it's all a part of god's will and i firmly believe that when you pray be very strategic and even if you're just learning how to pray just say what's on your heart because the lord will reveal to you you know what exactly you know you need or it's not even what you need it's just asking god provide what i need cuz i don't know that right there is like the best because he knows the best i i'm i'm always like afraid to ask for something specific i'm like lord give me your will this is what i would like but if it aligns with your will then so be it 
And if it doesn't, then that's okay too, because whatever you want from me is ultimately it's going to be the best to benefit my life. I may not understand it, but I'll endure it just because I trust you and I love you. So that's another thing. I kind, of, gonna, I kind of pray in a different way because a lot <laughs> of people, like, you know, um, he wants he he does know he know he does know the details of our heart he knows the details mm -hmm. of everything of our life before mm -hmm. and after and i just remember like in most of my prayers i would write down because a lot of people um yeah if you want to pray for a job and you just put dear god give me a job i need money right well, he'll give you just a job <laughs> give you yeah. a job and you're gonna be like well crap i don't want this job yes. <laughs> pray yes you pray, pray for be, you have to be you know it's like if you're receiving a gift from god you know, you want to be, you want to be able to receive it in mercy and that you know that it's good for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, you pray for that job. That's, you know, good for your family, that it's healthy for you, that there's people there that you can minister to, that there's people there that you can become fellowship and that you will have an ultimate purpose, whatever that mission of is of that job that it, you know, just blesses so many people in the world or that come along your way or that you can learn and just go deep in it, you know, and I just, and then most of my prayers, it's, it's about that, because I've been there before I prayed for my husband to have a new job, because it was he was just always traveling. And it was, um, it wasn't the healthiest situation, because we missed him so much. And I pray for God to give me the job that he created me for that, that that's all I ask. And there's just so many things that I have to pray for so many people that I'm praying for daily, that I kind of just I tell God, give me the words so I can get straight to the point because there's a lot of my prayers are taking like longer now. And I have people messaging me and, and to me, I'm thankful. It's an honor for people to ask me to pray for things that are big, like they're expecting a miracle. And they're like, can you please pray? Because I trust that when you when you pray that miracles come down and it's an honor. But for everybody, you have that power. And, and, and I know with me, it comes with a great responsibility. And that's why I say when people say, can you pray for a job? And I'm like, Lord, I pray for this person so-and-so that they find the, the career, it's not a job, a career and the assignments that they were created to fulfill in this world. You know, it's not just a job because, you know, it's, it's what did you create and me for? Use those names too, because you can't just say, "Oh, I pray for your aunt," or "I pray for this." And you no, I need details. Yes, I need details. And you know, we have to think because those are the daggers, those are the swords that the enemy can. Mm -hmm. Because if you just pray, you know, out there, and you know, oh, let me just pray for this and let me pray for that, then the en enemy won't know. Mm -hmm. He'll just go at you wherever he can. Yes. But mm -hmm. if you if you ordain these, you know, prayers with God, and you um ask for them he can see them he can you know he can see them he knows and he's not allowed because you have already spoken to god about that right and it's mm -hmm. like oh okay you said you know you said esme wow let me i'm stopped right there and you said her you said her husband mm -hmm. and you said his you said her his job right so these are all the barriers that we put up for the mm -hmm. enemy because we have already spoken them mm -hmm. and he cannot fit into any of that. He doesn't mm -hmm. know because if he does, then he'll come around somewhere slyly and like, Oh, well, she didn't mention that. Like she didn't have, mm -hmm. you know, his health in mind or she didn't mm -hmm. have this in mind. And you know, this I learned specifically from a lot of my elders because, um, man, when I, when I, I would just, you know, I feel the Holy Spirit when I, where I would sit with them and, mm -hmm. and I would be in that desperate move, right? Because you want like a, something big to happen. Like this, yes. I would come and just want miracles to happen like right then and there. And, and then now that I think about it, they did, they were huge. Like they were much more bigger mm -hmm. and better than anything because our God is so big that he wants us to think big and he wants us to see the details in our lives. Because we have the power through him. Yeah. What they did in the in the Bible days, like healings right there and then, I, I believe that I have that power. I believe that when I pray and I say, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, that this person's healed. And it's crazy because I remember a lot of the times when I was growing in, in prayers and praying and stuff like that, I remember I would see things that I prayed for people happen immediately immediately and then for me at times i would be like god it takes like a little longer but what god revealed to me is that when you're praying for other people you have to be consistently in protecting yourself because you have the power of the holy spirit and because you carry the power of the holy spirit the enemy is going to attack you and your family because he wants that power to be doubted he wants that power not to be exercised and that's why i realized that why is it that i walk through some stuff that they don't make sense and that people are just like in shock 
at some of the stuff that I walk through, but it's because of the power. When you're elevated, you know, new new levels, new devils. And I will tell you that right now in the season that um, I've had breakthrough in and that I know and trust God even more that he's just strengthening me. Because now when I see people walking through where I've been, I know what God will reveal to me to share with them, to encourage them, what to share with them on how to speak or to plan and strategize. How can we beat the enemy? Because the enemy will reveal his plan to you. And, and that's what I realized that I'm a warrior. I'm a prey warrior, but I'm at war every day of my life. I'm at war with the, the, the forces of darkness, the spiritual demonic forces that are coming against this world, the principalities of evil that are just coming to try to hinder the world from what God has for them. And that's why a lot of people, they, they don't walk through stuff that I walk through because the devil has them right where he wants them. So he's like, oh, I'm not going to bother you. You're doing great. <laughs> and, and that's why I would always think like, why is it that I'm under attack? Why is it that my household is under attack? Why is it that people that I thought loved me have betrayed me and I prayed for them and I've done this for them? Why? But that's what the Lord has shown me. I came to do good for the world and they mistreated me. They persecuted me. They hindered me. They not hindered him, but they didn't want like him, you know? And then when they found how glorious he was and the miracles, everybody wanted to be around Jesus. And that's the thing is that the Lord reveals to me through my painful situation who in my life is not for me? And that's the only way you can be revealed of who's not for you by them doing something. I believe that God puts his hand on your life, right? You have favor and favor. And then when he kind of just takes his hand off for a little bit for a reason, he's taking it off so he can show you. Look, who's with you when you have, when I have my hand on you? And look, who's not with you when I take my hand off? Because the hand's coming back. But it's just off for a minute. Just I mean, he's still there protecting us. He's still doing everything for us. It's just like a, a pause. There's a trial. And it's because I believe the closer you're getting to God, the enemy wants to stop you and discourage you. I would say a lot of things that have been happening this month and last month, now I know why they were happening. Because the people that I'm touching, the, the kings and queens that I'm touching right now, who I'm touching right now through the power of the Holy Spirit the enemy's after y'all. He's after my territory. He's after who I'm educating, who I'm praying for, who am I freeing captive of, of you know, thoughts in their head that are going to keep them in bondage. That's what the enemy's after. He's after my territory. Yeah. And and that's where I, I, I thank God that I pers persist. And no matter what comes my way, I'm still going to get up and talk about what God has called me to talk about because the enemy has no authority. I, I don't fear you. You may bring me through some situations that are agony, but everything passes. And when it passes, you're going to use what the enemy, you know, the Lord's going to use what the enemy tried to use to harm me, to bless me. He's going to strengthen the relationships that God ordained for me to reign over. He's going to, he's going to strengthen them because that's how good God is. And he just wants to, there's a test. There you is. pass the test, then you can move on to the next assignment. If you go through it, you will you have so much more blessings, yes. you know, and I remember like, you know, cause you talked about that. And I know I've talked about when I was in ministry mm -hmm. and man, I was just like, Oh, like, you know, it's just open myself up to so yeah. much spiritual battle. Well, cause when you open yourself to the Holy spirit, the enemy wants to block that. He wants to cap it. Yeah. So the way he'll cap it is like you said, you, you walk through things and, and you're like, like, really? Did, you know, and I think that's the main thing that if anybody wants to ever know, is just, uh, you know, ask for God for your protection. And he has that, you know, that we are in battle, but he tells us to put on the armor of God mm -hmm. and all these things that, you know, um, that in protection, we're of him. We already mm -hmm. won that battle. We have already mm -hmm. won it. And if we're walking in authority and we walk like we already won, mm -hmm. then anything victory. at us, we, we can take it on, you know? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have to tell myself that every day, but it was um, a moment in, you know, in that period of my life and not just my elders, but my father-in-law, mm -hmm. you know, told me because he was like, you're just doing too much. You're doing too much without God. Mm -hmm. And he's like, it's, and he gave me this metaphor and it kind of scared me and it was like a, a little weird, but mm -hmm. he's like, you know, and only because he did this and he had um, had so many people open to his home in Bible studies and mm -hmm. all kinds of deliverances. And he's had this. And so he's seen it firsthand mm -hmm. of how infectious it can be if you're not protected and how it yes. can go into your, to your yes. children and how, you know, serious it is to take mm -hmm. on a form of ministry and whatever that yes. you're 
to do. And I wasn't as serious. I was only serious in terms of the job at hand, right? Mm -hmm. I knew what I needed to do at the church. And I knew, you know, that I was skilled enough to be able to, to take this on and manage it from a job point, right? Mm -hmm. But in terms of me, you know, protecting my ministry and protecting the people and praying over this and asking God there to be with me. No, I didn't. I honestly didn't do that. And he told me, he's like, it's like a dog that does is not protected with medicine. Mm -hmm. Those, yes. It's like the evil will come like fleas mm -hmm. and just eat on. on and yes. latch on and it will be so hard to take off. Right. And um, he's like, it's just hard to get rid of, you know, it's hard. You can do so many things, but those fleas are there and they come just like, you're like, well, where, where did this come from? Right. Mm -hmm. You can let a dog out. And just like that, it's just like, just mm -hmm. latching on and they feed off of you and they, you know, give you so many diseases and all these things can happen. Right. To this they, dog. Suck li they suck life out of you. They try exactly. to suck life out of you. They're mm -hmm. just taking the life away from you. And so that's what they want. And they want to, they want to bring that, they want to bring that down. They want to bring you down and bring you down. And they, it did, it brought me down so much. So when he's like, you need to be protected, you have to have you asked God, you know, to be there with you in protection. And I just, I was, I said, no, because I didn't. And, and that went through a lot of things in my life in terms of, you know, my marriage and, and my children. And I just realized I got so, I feared so much. I got so mm -hmm. scared and I'm like, no, oh my gosh, you know, I need to do that. And I realized how much I needed that in my life to protect. And that's an opening, I'm sorry, oh, opening yourself, like opening yourself to that. What I have asked, like the Lord is, and that's the thing what's scary to me is that when you're open to that, you see it. And I see in the spirit where someone's not safe from my family. And there's times where God will tell me, okay, be, be patient or continue i have you and then there's just times where there's just like there's like just someone that i specifically just know that my children are not safe around and it's crazy because when god calls you to protect or to isolate or stay away protect your children from you know the, the what it is that i know is going to be detrimental for my children or for someone that i know that the lord has revealed to me like hey warn them that this is not good. And many of the times people don't understand. People think, oh, she's just jealous. Or, you know, I'm just using an example of what people say. But I, I realized that you can do what God, like Elijah told Jezebel, you know, watch out. You're, this is how you're going to die. You know, and even Jezebel put threats to Elijah, like, oh, they're going to come and they're going to do this. And the thing is that threats come greater and louder when... I believe that threats come greater and louder. And even when I was reading the Bible about Elijah and Jezebel, she was threatening to do all this stuff to Elijah. But in reality, she couldn't touch Elijah. Elijah ran from her. But after God told him, like, you know, why, why are you running from her? Like, you're protected. You know, he was just doing what God called him to do. And Jezebel kept raising and saying threats and stuff. But that's the way it is with the enemy. You know, he, he gets louder and, and, and things start happening like more when he's less weaker, when he, he's not that effective of you. And the reason why you're under attack is because what God revealed to me is you're effective, Esme. The more effective you become, the more of a threat you become. People don't understand like favor and they don't understand prophetic word. And you can tell somebody something like, you know, be careful what you're saying, you know, and, and they get all mad. But in reality, in reality, I'm just, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you what the Lord has revealed for me to say and that's why i always say to people like daniel said you know if you don't want to know the truth don't ask me you know if you don't want to know the truth don't ask me and and i believe that even with my family the lord has called me to keep my family away from uh people that my family may not understand but i'm not here to be like i mean i'm I, i'm not here to to be liked by everyone you know i'm here to do what god has called me to do and a lot of the things that i will tell you for for real a lot of the things that the lord has called me to do in my family they don't understand they criticize they judge they make accusations they come up with these own things in their minds and i'm just like where'd you make that up like they should write books i think that people that are very creative like you saw that creativity <laughs> And drama to write books, right? People like books that have drama. I don't, unless it's real life. But that's how I feel like 
you're focused so much on the wrong things. You're over here trying to justify a situation. You're trying to say this happened because of this. Why is this happening? It doesn't make sense. Think about this. If something doesn't make sense, God is always behind things that don't make sense. If it doesn't make sense and you're like, well, this person does this, but then why is this happening? It's not your job to figure it out. Right. Focus on your life. You're getting distracted on someone else. And this is what I was thinking about yesterday. I was thinking yesterday to myself, Lord, why do so many people want to know about my life? Why do so many people like want to know about my life? Why, why do people care? Why do I come out of so many people's mouths? And the Lord revealed to me, is like, Lord, like he was like, as my people live their life through you <laughs> your life is so spontaneous it's, it's so like people living through like reality shows. yeah it's like, a reality TV show. people <laughs> and i and i wonder and it's yes. absurd like it it, it 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 i don't even know like these people literally feel like they're part of their family and yes. follow them so much so that they don't even live their own life right yes. yeah, you get caught up living somewhere and that's the same them and buy the things that they buy and do the things that they do when you are absolutely missing out on your own life i mean yes. it is like come on right yes yeah. and that's crazy because i noticed that when i got off of facebook for a week my my views on youtube went up and i was like because i <laughs> Because what I was thinking, because yeah. when I started, my, <laughs> they're like, you know, where did she go? Where did she do it? <laughs> yeah, it's like one of my family members that's close to me has um, has told me, like, man, everybody's just always asking about you and this is you and you and you. And I was like, you know what? Just let them think we're enemies. So nobody n asks anything about me, you know? And, and, it, and that's why I've always wondered, like, Lord, why is Esme the talk of so many topics and subjects? And, you know, and, I, and, and, and that's where the Lord told me, well, for you to be uh, 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 influence you know people have to talk people talk about the good works that God's doing they're going to talk good or bad and for me I live my life the way God called me and that's why I think when I was a young girl the Lord showed me they're going to talk about you they want to beat you up because they have their own belief about you and it's their own mentality but I'm going to protect you I'm going to you're going to do what I called you to do and that's what I'm saying many people that are pastors or many people that are influencers or many people that uh, are well known they didn't ask for it. It just happens. It's like, I'm saying, like, for me, do you think that I've wanted people to always be talking about me? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I, I mean, talk about, like, she loves God, right? But that's where I'm saying, like, when you're called to do something, you didn't ask for it. And I always say, like, if you're upset because of the way I live or you're upset because there's just things that I do that upset you, take it up with God. Right. Seriously. And, and I say, like, the other day, too, like, I said something, like, well, God told me, and they're like, Literally, like they rolled their like, oh, there you go. And I'm just there like, you go. <laughs> like, I was just like, yeah, oh my God. Yes. The, the whole, the, and I was just like, I'm not even going to go there or something like that. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I, I was like, Lord, why is it that people doubt that so much? But it's because uh -huh. they listen to other voices around them. They wouldn't even hear God if God smacked them and in the, the face. And that's what you said. They don't listen. Like, it's, yeah. you know, and they just don't listen. Or somebody has the same story, right? It's like the same darn story. Well, I don't, you know, I want to do this, but how do I do this? And how do I do what you do? I want to do that, but I want to do it this way. And I'm do like, what you were supposed to do. I take it seriously. I'm like, all right, you want my, you want my expertise? You want, you can call me. I'll give it to you for free. Yes, me too. I will tell you everything. You want to do what I do? All right, let's, you know, you sit down, you commit, you tell me all your goals, you tell me everything. That's kind of like what God's saying too, yes, right? Yes, yes. There he is because he's saying right here, don't worry. And these people worry about, well, how do I do this? And they worry about all these little things, right? Without taking action. He wants us to take action, right? Mm -hmm. Right now. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Not tomorrow, not mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. Do it today. And when I sit with these people and I tell them, like, this is what you do. And it's like, oh, like, okay, that's a lot of work, right? <laughs> like, well, see, and to you, I, and and to you it's not, it's not and work. They have to write the yes. words, right? I'm like, you need a paper. We're going to do this for an hour. And you're going to come and tell me all the things that I need to know about you, right? And we sit there and then we'll go through them and they get like a little overwhelmed. So I said, look, write all this down. You go home and you do your homework. And I'm telling you, it, literally, what how i do what i do right and that's like what god's telling us i'm telling you all this stuff for you to have this mm -hmm. blessing mm -hmm. for you to have to go out and do your purpose right successfully mm -hmm. but then you look at the work and you look at like things that you need to take out of your life that you're not doing things Sacrifice. that 
doing, things that you need to be obedient about and you're not doing it. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like that list when they look at it and it's like, oh, okay, you know, and they don't, I didn't know it, it they don't believe it. A lot of times yes. they're like, oh, well, they don't, I can see the disbelief, right? Yes, yes, yes. I can see the overwhelming and I can see the worry start to take in them. And, you know, and I, I check up on these people too. I'm like, have you done this? And if you haven't done it by like the third time I reach out, it's like God telling you, boss, you know, already, like I've already. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> que Dios te bendiga. <laughs> you know, bye-bye. You go on the other side. <laughs> Track, the right? Lord be with you. And, you know, and it's like, I've literally told you what I'm doing yeah. and you don't do it. And it's like God getting frustrated with us too because he gets yes. mad. Like, hey, yes. I yes. told you and you're not doing it. And, yes. you know, and that's my story. Like every time like people come to me super curious, well, how do you do what you do? And how did you do that? What's your secret? And what's your secret? What do you do? Well, let's talk, right? You want to do it? Let's sit down and... Then it just never, it just becomes like, and I'm like, hey, so have you done this? You should be doing this. You should be doing this. And it's like this just overwhelming thing. But all these other things come so easy to, you know, live in somebody else's life. They'd rather live somebody else through somebody else's life mm -hmm. or just, you know, be over here mm -hmm. wasting away mm -hmm. and still continuing to like have these excuses mm -hmm. about how God hasn't blessed them mm -hmm. when he provided that for us and he's mm -hmm. just saying honor me by doing the work and by being obedient That's yes. it. listen just listen to what i'm saying mm -hmm. right and you know i've been there a lot of times i'm not going to be perfect in everything that i do and i listen because i you know i get i get you know slammed on my face about like oh, okay yeah you know i needed to give this to god but you know that's that's the way mm -hmm. it is you have to do the work a lot of people, like, like I would tell you, even for one, I've seen you work daily. I've seen you from when you started. And what God has revealed to me is that, like, when people say, good morning, when people say, you know, oh, you're, you know, they want the blessings. This is what God revealed to me. They want the blessings, but do they realize, like, I ask people, like, you know, if, you know, they're like, oh, you live like this, or you look like this, and you do this, and you do what you love, whatever. But I'm thinking, okay, you want to walk in my shoes for a day? You want to try it? Because many people want the blessings, but it's like you, what you do, you do it naturally. You love to do it. And if you're telling them what it is that you need to do to be there and they're like, no, well, because that's not the desire of your heart. A lot of people want the, the harvest of the blessings, but they're not walking through the walk. In order for us to get blessed, we walk through sorrow. We walk through grief. We walk through hardship. We walk through persecution, resistance, opposition, critic, like being ridiculed and, and being criticized daily. But yet you want what I have, but you don't, you, you don't want to put in that, that work. And that's why I say like a lot of people, when they ask me, Oh, how did you like, you want to pick that fruit? Nice. Yes. And yes. Out, but you didn't do the work, the labor to yes. prepare that soil. And, yes. Amen. The arms of the rain. And one of the, the things that the Lord revealed to me about Cain and Abel is that Cain and Abel had the, the same, opportunities they had the same resources and they had the same finances to fulfill what it was that god called them to fulfill cain killed abel out of envy anger and that's what the lord revealed to me is that anger turns into murder if you look at cain he was angry angry and he took it out on abel he was jealous of abel but yet when god called cain to to sacrifice cain didn't make the same sacrifices cain was doing the same thing his parents did which is generational cursing Abel was coming to break that. He was making different decisions. Cain was still being disobedient as his parents were, Adam and Eve. But then Abel came and he was trying to break generational cursings. And what did Cain do? He killed Abel because he was jealous and envious of what, and all Abel was doing was sacrificing to God what God asked. All Cain had to do was sacrifice the lamb. Right. And instead he killed his brother and there was bloodshed on the street because of his, on the, on the floor because of his brother. And even when God asked him, where's your, oh, I'm not my brother's keeper. He still had an attitude. He still had that, that he had no gratitude. Yeah. Instead of thinking, what can I do to help my brother to, so we can bring this, we can all be blessed. He killed him. And, and that's what I realized is that with every criticism we received, every opposition and resistance and just being judged by people, sure. they're slowly trying to kill our spirit. And I will tell you in the moment when someone tries to kill my spirit and tell me something so evil or so mean yeah i think to myself thank god i have the power of the holy spirit because puppy because be, you can't kill me you can probably kill me in a moment like you're gonna hurt my spirit but in reality you're killing yourself because what you're telling me 
if I don't forgive you, which God, give me your forgiveness. I, I pray for the people that do that because it's, it's, they don't realize that anger is killing something or someone, something inside of someone. And if you're killing something, killing is not in scripture. Killing is not from God. All of that is from the enemy. And if you're not giving life, you're killing in anything that you do in anger, you're killing something. You're putting an end to something. It's going totally against scripture and God's word. So you're not working for God's glory. You're working for the enemy. And when you're working for the enemy, you reap what you sow. You're going to reap death in your life. And I don't know what death that is, but I will tell you to check yourself, check your heart, because what death is the, the, is the opposite of life. Life is God. It's hope, truth. And if you're living in death, lies, deceit, and you're trying to be you know, elevated, you're going to get elevated by the enemy. But with the enemy, you're, you're paying with something. Thank you, everybody, yes. for joining us. We appreciate you. If you have any prayer requests, you can direct message those to Esme or I. And, um, yeah, we will be here every morning in November 7 to 730. So if you want to invite anyone, we appreciate it. Yes, yes. Can you pray for us? As we yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word. It was short but impactful. I pray, Father, for everyone that is under the sound of our voices, Lord, for those that need healing. I pray for miraculous healing right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for deliverance. I pray for people that are in the hospitals. I pray for bold, miraculous healings, Father, that don't make sense. I pray for people that are expecting healing, Lord, for them to continue speaking of your promise and your word, to align their prayers with your word, Lord, that we are the head, never the tail. We are going to live long, prosperous, healthy lives, Lord, that you bless us with that. And I pray for generational cursings to be broken into generational blessings, for us to have spiritual discernment of where to add and where to remove in our lives, Father. Give us the obedience to surrender and submit daily to you for the resources finances opportunities that are right in front of us lord that we're obedient to your will to bless others and extend mercy and grace to others as you extend to us i pray for those that are disconnected that they, they do not influence other people to be disconnected in the name of jesus i pray that we are all connected to your spirit so therefore we will encourage others to be connected to you in jesus name may we have christ-like hearts everywhere we go christ-like perspectives and christ-like christ-like minds Thank you for protection and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. We honor you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Love y'all. Praying for y'all. Bye. Bye, Pasito. <laughs>